on my plane chose to fail. Phil will assist me in uh, editing. Thank you, Phil. Mr. Wynn? Yes, I'm going to back the doctor back was out there. So the book is on. On 9th Street, I got my first uh, book signing there on November 1st. Fantastic. 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 Anymore. I want to thank uh, the gentleman that just walked in. Uh, I want to say that he's dynamic. He's helped several of my clients with the insurance based on purchasing of the houses, and he has been able to bring in a better rate with a very good company, which is very important. They have a rating company and they good rate. So keep them in mind. Uh, I want to also thank Roger who sat down and met with me, so I want to thank you for that. I want to thank Merlin for also taking some time this morning for us to meet. I want to thank Mark. Mark made a referral for me. I owe you some money. I'm trying to shoot books. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like to thank Gus for helping my significant other. I'd like to thank my friend uh, Bill Scott Wallace for reminding me of him. Uh, reminding him a very Important business principle and an um, um, important principle in life uh, just this morning reminding me not to have contempt prior to investigation. <laughs> she would have left from there. Yeah. I also wanted to thank Sandria. What I'm trying to do is meet with everybody one on one. I said, well, if we just get here at 7 o'clock, there's usually like a five or 10 minute window. So I want to make sure that everybody else is doing that because it's hard to know, like, and trust people if you don't know them. So I thought that would be a good thing for everybody to make it. I would also encourage you to come on time. Have a lead for Gus Redmond, uh, and so I'll see you at the meeting. I'll see you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't wait. I called you a week ago. You said, right. Yeah. And I called you back. Yes, yeah, you did. Uh, we are kind of like a family here, uh, and uh, I say this is a family reunion once a week, you know. Uh, what I was pleased with, you know, just allow me to say that in our last set of thank yous and referrals, there were at least three people that said one of us got another one of us out of a jam. Do you remember that? Now that, that, that really kind of says something, you know. We're not just here to make money off or from each other, although that's a great thing but uh, also to the service one another. All right. So a couple more and then we're going to get, get moving. All right. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, I just uh, want to thank everybody here in the Ace Business Network. Uh, it's just like an Ace Business Family Network. Mm -hmm. And I believe everybody feels that way here. I just want to thank all of you all. Uh, just by you being here, you know, just like you said, not all of you here. But to help each other and encourage each other, I think that's very unique. It is this a, a very unique in our frame of our race and our own uh, By the way, Ted Hollander couldn't be here. He went to a family reunion. So he said that he dressed uh, in his role. I apologize. Excuse my voice. However, I want to thank uh, Mr. Sterling Davis. I have a computer. I don't know why I just think he can fix any and everything when it comes to computers. And he took the time to come by and pick up my computer. To me, that was my baby because it has so much good stuff on it. But I just want to say thank you. And thank Mr. Um, uh, Crab. What's his name? Who did you just say is on the family? Hollander. Okay. So well, that's my thank you, and I thank the, being here and having the opportunity to meet so many beautiful and wonderful people. you all have a great day. Maybe one or two more. Yeah, Miss Brazil. I would like to thank Al Wynn and Jane Cattell for coming out to our DM Direct presentation, even though it was canceled, but I'd like to thank them for coming out. Yes. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Hill City. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, working out, staying in shape, and maintaining your health. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And I talked about a workout test I go to, and he came this last past Tuesday. Did he show us? Did he show us? No. Yeah. Ask him if he showed up. <laughs> but it was something different, but I just want to thank him for taking the time to come out. And everybody else is invited to come out, too, just to see after meeting. But the instructor for the class 
I want to uh, have put them on the schedule to come talk about the workout. Sure. While you're up, you were scheduled for September the 29th. So you speak to our, this is our uh, President Emeritus. Is that how you say, Doctor? President Emeritus or something like that. Okay. And then the study, you kind of speak a lot more. You guys are good friends. Yeah. Well, so many people have helped me over the years. Amen. Right there. Well, I, I'm ready there. So I just want to thank everyone. And, and Ms. Jan, healthy. I know that. Okay. So, uh, that's what we covered the water. But I'd like to do a couple things. Uh, Sterling comes to our men's fellowship, Toby, every Friday, and, and that's where we they say iron sharpens iron. And uh, I really appreciate Sterling. Uh, Jan, of course, couldn't be here. He gave me the push report, so I don't have to go to the breakfast. I can within minutes of so, uh, the breakfast and push. Jay's an old buddy. Uh, I can't say we're a doctor buddy, but I've known him a long time. You know, and uh, quite an interesting guy. You guys all the tug on Jay because they've forgotten more than most of us know. I said a lot right there. Um, also, Sharon, you uh, such a quiet servant. You might not realize it that. Sharon is tape recording every meeting. Some of them are photographed. And today, uh, my wife, uh, representing our, our company, is, uh, is filming. But uh, Sharon's always there. Someday we're going to archive all the things that went on here and, and you know, enjoy the final product when we can get it together. Dr. Watts, um, I'm going to nominate you our interim chapel. All right? Uh, you're our interim chaplain. I mean, I thank you for providing food for the kids that are in my. Uh, my intern, uh, Gus is my financial counsel, and Gus has worked out some great things. And lastly, Mark Stevens. Mark is a friend and a confidant, and uh, helped me out of the jam not too long ago, and uh, uh, Phil towards you like a brother. Now, you're supposed to do the introduction, and I understand there's some additional protocol, so Mr. Yeah. Stevenson, Captain Stevens. Uh, there is, <coughs> thank you very much, Morgan Robin. There is a gentleman, um, a, a gentleman among us who, who uh, after meeting, um, uh, there's a gentleman uh, who after meeting, I'm so sorry. Hi, how are you doing? There's a gentleman who after meeting our uh, esteemed speaker, who just kept calling me over and over with such passion and says, Mark, I just cannot stop talking or thinking about this lady. And so I'm going to defer this esteemed honor of introducing our guest speaker to Philip Henry. <coughs> Thank you very much. I really thought it was because I'm the most senior person here. <laughs> Not in uh, the organization, but in in age, which means I've heard a lot of speakers over the course of the of the years. And uh, when Joe told me that he saw her uh, Saturday night, I was in doing a training, but I also spoke to her to the people because she has such a great she has such a great presentation, great story. <coughs> After I met her the first time, I was talking to everybody about it. And one person remembered reading your story, I think it was in Jet Magazine, how many years ago would that have been? Uh, so he knew, he knew the, the story of uh, her life. She has a great presentation to make. And uh, in my office, I have a picture of Mickey Mouse that she autographed for me at that presentation. And I look at it all the time, and when my kids come, I tell them, her story, and uh, I just can't say enough about Tawana Williams and of course, uh, Toby. So, get on your feet. This time I'm going to ask you, get on your feet, even before you hear it. Get on your feet. Get on your feet. Get on your feet.
We are not late, slow, full, slack. We are business people. We handle our business. I just want to make sure that you guys know that I'm never late. That's why I've continued for more than 12 years through the word of mouth to continue, you know, for people to call on me to do what I do. So, you know, time is a lesson and it's very important. So everybody's doing good this morning? Oh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'm Tawana Williams, your messenger of hope and inspiration. And I've overcome the devastating adversity of being born without arms. I was addicted to crack cocaine for 10 years. I was raped during a home invasion and then raped by my stepfather. I've experienced abortion and motherhood. So I know that I'm qualified to help you overcome whatever adversities you may be facing in your life. That's who I am. I'm unarmed, but dangerous. <laughs> I'm not going to take up much of your time. I just stop by to encourage you in your business, in your life, in your aspirations, your dreams. And I want to let you know that it is possible. Anything that you want, anything that you want to do, you want to have, it's possible for you to have it, for you to do it. But you must have vision. And vision doesn't come from the eyes, it comes from the heart. You must know where you're going. You must have a plan. Write it. Plain. Follow it. Take steps. Take baby steps in the beginning. I've been a speaker for more than 12 and a half years. It wasn't easy. It was not easy to get to where I am right now. There were many, many times of discouragement. You know, for 12 and a half years doing this, for more than nine and a half of those 12, for free. Ooh. We travel this country for free for nine and a half years. So that means it's only been about three years of actually getting paid. So you got to lay a foundation. You got to sow some seed. You got to prepare. My husband told me, told me, gave me a quote, and he said, preparation, then execution. You can't just step out here and do what she's doing or what he's doing. You gotta prepare for this thing. It's not gonna be easy. You keep doing what you're doing. You keep walking the streets and handing out flyers. Somebody's gonna recognize you. Somebody's gonna take what you give them and use it and call on you. But it's not going to be easy. I found that in life sometimes you just gotta figure it out. Life didn't come with, doesn't come with instructions. And it surely didn't come in with instructions for me. It was hard. It was a struggle. But I made it. I'm still here. Still doing what God created me to do. I had a mother that told me that there was nothing that I could not do. And my grandma Rogers, she told me, she said, T, she said, you must not have needed arms because God didn't give them to you. <laughs> now, I was four years old when those words were spoken to me. Can you imagine having a grandma that spoke good stuff into you like that? Grandma told me, she said, nothing's missing. So I'm here to let each and every one of you today know that nothing's missing. Nothing's missing. Whatever you need, you already have. It's in you. It was in you when you were created. When your creator created you, Doc Walls, he gave you everything you need. Everything. So I'm here to let you know it's in you. It's in you. As I said, sometimes you just gotta figure it out. When it doesn't come with directions or instructions, you figure it out. It's going to be hard. Oh, yeah. It was hard for me. I failed many times. But as my mentor, Les Brown, says and teaches us, 
He says, when you fall, try landing on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. So I'm here to let you know, when you fall, you look up and you get up. And you keep getting up again and again and again. I did. Many times I find that we survive instead of thrive. It's time to thrive in your life. Dogs survive. Cats survive. Animals in the wilderness survive. No, you don't want to survive. You want to thrive in your life. You have everything you need. Now go thrive. Go thrive in your business. Go help somebody. You know, that's, to me, that's why I do what I do. It's all about helping somebody. It's all about letting people see that there is greatness in them too. And I used to think about, you know, how God could use me. Little old Tawana, former crackhead. How could, you know what I'm saying? How in the world would God, why would he want to use me to do what I did? And then... Why would he create me this way? If it was not to win. <laughs> I tell people, I was born to win. Why else would he create me like this? I'm only four feet, five and a half inches tall. I got one leg shorter than the other. I was told I'd never walk. I was told I'd never have a child. My daughter's 22 years old. I was told... <laughs> I was told so many things. My mom was told so many negative things by the doctor. But I'm here. Why? Because I was born to win. Come on. Man. And so were you. You were born to win. So it's time to figure it out. Go figure it out. I've been figuring things out in my life from the time I can remember. I had to. I had no other choice. For me, it's either do it or die trying. That's who I am. That's why I consider myself to be unarmed or dangerous. Not because I don't have arms, but because of who I am. And what's on the inside of me. I'm a fighter. I'm a winner. Right. Every day I tell life, I say, life, okay, bring it on. I know you got something for me today. Let me go ahead and, and, and equip myself, put my boxing glove on my feet, and I'm ready. I'm ready. And you've got that same power because you know something's coming today. Life will test you. Life tests each and every one of us every single day. So you might as well tell life from the moment you get up, okay, life, bring it. What do you have for me today? I got my gloves on and I'm ready to fight. Because you're going to have to fight through this thing. It's not going to be easy. It's not easy. People look at the success and they think it was easy. It wasn't easy. It was a struggle. But we fought our way through this thing, Toby and I. And we're still here. We're still in this race. We're still in this game. Just think about the many people who started out with you when you said you were going to start your own business. Most of them are probably no longer with you. They gave up. They quit. They started a race and couldn't make it to the finish line. Life challenges came and knocked them off course. Financial challenges came. Relationship challenges came. Family challenges came. Your children get knocked off course every now and then. You know, challenges of competition came. Somebody else was doing it bigger and better than you were. Somebody else was selling more than you were. Competition is coming. Challenges are coming. But you got to figure this thing out. Figure it out. Do whatever it takes. Stop telling yourself you can't when you were born to win. It's crazy to me. I see so many people who have everything going for themselves, and most of them do nothing. 
When times get hard and challenges come, they fall and they don't get up. That's amazing to me. So I'm here to encourage somebody on today. I don't know who we drove two and a half, three hours for. <laughs> but somebody. Yeah, thank you, Captain Mark. Plus the 14 and a half from North Carolina. It was for somebody on today. And whoever you are, put your sword in your hand, put your gloves on, whatever it is you got to do. But keep it moving. Get it going. Get it started. Figure it out. There were many times in my life where I just had to say, okay, nobody's going to help me. I got to do it. I got to figure it out. When I had my daughter, everybody around me said, how in the world are you going to do it with no arms? How are you going to take care of a baby? I didn't know. I just knew that that was my gift from God, my daughter. And I knew I had to do it. So I found myself putting a blanket on the floor, putting my baby on top of that blanket, feeding her, bathing her, changing her pamper, braiding her hair. These are things that people said you can't do with no arms. I did it. Come on now. Every time somebody told me what I could not do, the next time that they saw me, I was doing what I could do. And you got that same power. You got the power. What's in your hands? What's in your hands? It's a powerful statement. Think about it. What's in your hand? What are you doing? Are you doing everything you can to succeed in life, to succeed and to grow your business? Or are you mediocre? <laughs> it's time out for doing just enough to get by. You got to give it your all. You got to give it 150%. You got to do it when you don't feel like it. Yeah. There are times when I don't feel like speaking, but people depend on me. I've got 20 to 25 speakings on my calendar per month. That's a whole lot of traveling. And 90% of my speakings are not in North Carolina or in my area. I do it when I got cramps, late. When I got a headache, when I don't feel like, when my grandson is getting on my nerves, when my daughter is stressing me out, I do it anyway. When my husband and I are seeing eye to eye, <laughs> 